Hello, thank you for stopping by. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm going to be sewing a coat using a reconstructing history pattern for a 1916 Royal Flying Corps officer's jacket. In my last video, I went through the planning stages of this project. I chose out my fabrics. I cut my pattern pieces out. I did a mock-up and a test fitting. I made alterations to the pattern and then I cut the pattern pieces out of the shell and lining fabric. So in this video, I'm going to start the construction process. I've decided that I want to do a little bit of a riff on flat lining for this project, and I'll show you how I did that. But first, I thought it would be interesting to take a little bit more of a look at the history of this jacket. Only 11 years after the first heavier-than-air flight, airplanes were already poised to become invaluable weapons of war so much so that they warranted their own dedicated branch of the British military. Those early aircraft had open cockpits, which made both wind and cold major problems for the pilots. The Royal Flying Corps jacket was developed with an overlapping front that kept out the wind and helped to keep pilots warm, but it also created a distinct and sharp look for this new branch of the military. It was made from heavy wool fabric, usually British khaki serge, but there are lots of examples of variations worn by men of different ranks, at different locations, and at different times during World War I. Wool fabric was a very practical choice. It has excellent insulating properties that it maintains even when wet. It is easy to tailor into sharp looking uniforms, and it doesn't fray when cut, which means the seams didn't need to be finished, and that jackets made from it were cheaper and quicker to produce. For this project, I decided to use a modern cotton duck cloth for the outer fabric, and a poly taffeta for the lining. If you'd like more in-depth information about how I chose the fabrics, check out my video with all the boring details. Once I was done with all the prep work, I started by making the darts on the outer fabric. Then I overcast them by hand to keep them from fraying. Then I made two waistbands, one for each of the front pieces and attached them into the side seams. After that, I made the welt pockets on the front pieces and I sewed the welt pockets into the waistband so when there is weight in the pockets, they will pull on the waistband rather than pulling on the front piece. After that, I made the darts on the lining fabric and I just melted them with a cigarette lighter to keep them from fraying. I sewed the lining and front pieces together using a quarter inch seam allowance. And when I do the actual construction, instead of using the 5 8 inch seam allowance, I will use a 3 8 inch. That will be the 5 8 minus 1 quarter to give you 3 8 then I turned the pieces right side out and did a gentle press on the lining side with a low heat. Then I cranked the iron up as hot as it would go, and I ironed the pieces again from the outer side and pressed them with an inch of their life. Then I just top stitched around all of the edges to keep them nice and neat. Right now I have the two back pieces together. I have the front pieces with the facings sewn onto them. I've done the buttonholes, pockets. I've done the sort of weird bag slash flat lining thing I've been doing. Uh, I've got the shoulder seams and side seams attached and I'm getting ready to set in the sleeves. sleeves in fit a little bit more tightly more fitted than I was expecting so I'm very very glad I went up to the size 44 instead of sticking with my uh, 40 inch chest measurement uh, but uh, I'm gonna keep at it and I will come back to you and let you know how it goes
All right, I've been toiling away at this thing. I got the collar on. I put some buttons in place to get everything closed up. Uh, I realized that this is very difficult to button up this side by myself, um, especially this very, very top right button. Pardon me while I ride the struggle bus. Uh, it's just a very awkward way to have to pull this arm to button these, especially in a tight fitting sleeve. So this very top button, I even just replaced with a snap closure instead of the original button because there's no way I could get the button closed at all. And getting the snap shut by myself, or this magnetic snap shut by myself is even kind of tricky. Um, for the collar, or for the cuffs, what I did was just make some very, very small cuffs. And uh, I just made them shorter than the sleeve. And uh, I will just put like a very small button there so I can close it like that. Uh, just close it down to fit tightly. It's a very, very basic cuff. I like using that on outerwear. But really all I have to do now is just a few closures and then I'm just going to do a very simple hem on the bottom of this. I think just a rolled hem. Uh, I may even just, uh, I may even just use some twill tape and stitch it down. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. If I ever decided to come back to this jacket, I would definitely do a few things differently. Um, I would definitely completely change up the arms. Uh, just redraw the arm size and redraw the arms, uh, the sleeve caps, the sleeves. This part that laps over, I would reduce its size by a good several inches so it didn't come quite so far over. That would give me just a little bit more reach to button it up so I wouldn't be in such an awkward position to get it uh, closed. And I might even completely replace the buttons with a zipper so I could just you know, zip up like this. I would redraft the collar also. This has the collar stand and fall as one. Um, and I'm just not sort of happy with the size of it. It was supposed to end at the gorge darts, which it did, but it was a little bit wonky. Part of that was me. So at this point, I'm just gonna go through finishing up the very, uh, very few last details. Um, Hemming the bottom of this, uh, adding some buttons and button holes to these cuffs so I can close them, and then washing it, uh, see how it feels after it washes. Ar arranging these buttons was a lot more work than I thought, trying to get everything to sit perfectly. And I might include a magnetic snap on the inside as well. Let me show you that. So when I first put this on, I have to sort of pull this part all the way over to try to get it to set and sort of tuck it into the shoulder here. So it does sort of hold its place once it's tucked into the shoulder just from the snugness of the jacket. But I might put a magnetic button or snap right in there to hold it in place, but I don't know if I want that, uh, that extra bulk pressing there. It might be kind of uncomfortable. But you can see when I pull the jacket front over, there's always some fiddling with it. It's really, I really need to be in front of a mirror to get this thing on correctly. So as far as being a comfortable, casual jacket, I don't know about that, but I'm gonna get some use out of it. Um, I will not be able to layer as much under it as I thought I would, because even having gone up two sizes, it's still kind of tight on me. But I'm going to stop rambling now and finish up the last details of this, and uh, I'll be done. And I'm gonna start on my next project, which I think is going to be making a Christian Dior shirt jacket out of thrifted wool. You may have seen this already if you watched my what the heck should I sew video. Um, and so it's this Christian Dior shirt jacket. This is a pattern I think from the 70s. Uh, pretty simple to make. Uh, so I think it'll be pretty cool. And uh, I've seen some really cool shirt jackets on the shelves at like the higher end shops uh, and been slightly jealous of them. So I'm hoping this will come out as cool as some of those look. I'm gonna be using this um, really nice wool that I got at the thrift store for like under five bucks, I think. And then that only calls for like a half lining, doesn't call for a full lining. So I have this just uh, like standard, like old fashioned sleeve lining. And I have enough of this to do the full or the half lining that that calls for. So I think I'm just gonna use this for the lining. I think that'll be um, interesting. It also reminds me a little bit of uh, an old episode of Seinfeld 
where he gets a jacket and it has like a candy stripe lining in it. <laughs> it's like a really nice jacket, but the lining is like terrible. Anyways, that's what that reminded me of and I thought it would be kind of funny. I will leave you with a few pictures just so you can see some of the details of the jacket a little bit more close up. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you have not already, please subscribe. That would help me out tremendously. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the future.